Well, my next two guests are very familiar to everybody in the Flashpoint family. And uh, some people, I suppose, over the years would think, well, that I have Nolan Finley and Stephen Henderson on because they can find a way to uh, disagree over just about everything. <laughs> but I also think it has to do with the fact that they disagree quite agreeably. And I'm very happy to have them here because they're both now heading up the Civility Project. Yeah. Uh, it's you two are a really interesting couple, and I say that in a, because you kind of are a couple. You go a lot of places together. People see you at events together, and you're of course you sit here together a, a lot as well, and on Detroit Public Television. Mm -hmm. But it's really interesting, Stephen, because um, I, I've heard you guys argue about the smallest, silliest oh, things. Yeah. You really can find an argument in anything. Yeah. And yet, it's civil somehow. Yeah, it's civil in the sense that uh, I think when when each of us walks away from the conversation, no one's saying, "Well, that's it. I'm never talking to that guy again," <laughs> or "I can't wait." I've to had moments like that with both of you, right. but you have it with each <laughs> right. other. Uh, and, and that is about uh, you know a mutual respect for the people that we are, as opposed to the things that we might uh, believe or the opinions we might espouse. And that's a really difficult place to get to. I get that. So, and, there, and, and right now, you think of all the people who can't manage to do it at all, and I completely understand. I think what Nolan and I have been able to do uh, is two things. One is to keep looking beyond just the opinion and look to the person, the man uh, mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that, that each of us is, uh, but also, uh, understanding where it all comes from, why he thinks what he thinks, yeah. uh, and and respecting that um, that he comes from a place that that gives meaning to what he's saying, uh, and it's not just uh, pejorative, it's not just nasty. It really is about who he is. Again, that's really hard, and there's times when I I, I want to punch him uh, or, or, or run at him or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but w we both have worked hard enough at it over 10 years or so yeah. to be able to keep it going. Well, here's the thing. I mean, you've not met probably two people who enjoy disagreeing more than the two of us. <laughs> that's <laughs> part of it. And part let's, of it. you know, let's be honest. A good argument in, in that's a that you know at the end of it not going to do any damage to a relationship so you feel comfortable arguing you feel comfortable getting heated you feel comfortable disagreeing that's a lot of fun you know it, it, yes. and you can't do that with everybody because people say oh you like, both give each other this. a fair amount of space to uh, i don't feel like you beat each up beat each other up over something. Well, you remember when you said two years ago, blah, yeah, blah, blah. We're not trying to score points. But I also think that a key to this, and this is why I wonder <clears> how <throat> transferable it is, you both uh, sense in each other, I believe, uh, an intellectual equal. And I think a lot of the discourse that happens in America right now is, well, that person doesn't know as much as I do, or right. that person's not as smart as me. So I guess that's what I'm wondering. You guys took on this project, and I'm wondering how transferable you think well, what you do is. Very much, because I think that's the first step. You've got to get over <clears> this <throat> notion that everybody who doesn't think the way you think is somehow stupid or evil or um, Ill mo has an ill motive. And one of the first things we did before we ever started arguing was get to know each other and realize that, you know, Steve, very early on, I mean, I respected his work, and I realized he looks at things uh, the same way I do, you know, honestly assessing the facts and then applying his own sets of values and experience to it the same way I do it. His experiences and values are different, so he comes up with a different opinion than, than I do. But we go through the same process. We, we just end up in different places, which yeah. doesn't make either one of us a bad person. And, and when you think about the things that are going on right now, I mean, there is real evil in the world, right? And there's real evil in this country that's rearing its head. And I think what we're talking about is not... Uh, backing away from calling that out or saying that there are times uh, when you've got to stiffen your spine and and you know get after uh, things that are that are just wrong. Uh, at the same time, when you're sitting across the table from somebody that you know, from somebody who lives in your community uh, and is working in the same space as you are, really on the same problems, I think you have to approach it a little differently, and you have to. Um, you have to say, uh, what is it about this person 
that, that I can find value in uh, in order yeah. to, to keep, because that's the only way we solve problems, especially at the local level. And that's what we're really talking about here, how we deal with each other in a really confined space. Well, exactly. So many of the disagreements that we hear, particularly if we're watching cable news these days, are really among people who don't necessarily know each other that well. That's right. uh, that's and true. you two have a different sort of experience there. But I also wonder this, Nolan. You've never been a full-throated uh, endorser of the president. And uh, the paper, of course, very memorably uh, mm -hmm. refused to endorse him and endorsed a, a, a libertarian candidate instead. And I wonder, Stephen, if he was uh, more of, a, of an ardent Donald Trump mm -hmm. supporter, if your patience and tolerance would, would be the same. It would have been strained, there's no question. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, I have a hard time with people who support the president. But I also have learned, and I got to say, since uh, 2016, to be more patient with, with them. I mean, I spent a lot more time in Macomb County uh, than I did before the election trying to understand, trying to really understand what it is about somebody who's so vile, uh, from my point of view, uh, that other people find uh, supportable. And that's not, again, that's not easy. And, no. uh, and it's not calling on people to not call out the stuff that he does that's, yeah. that's evil and wrong. It is saying, when you're talking about your neighbors, when you're talking about people in your community, uh, you, you have to find a way, I think, uh, to be able to at least respect uh, the point of view that they have and and uh, but that's why I wanted to throw the president into this yeah. Nolan because we know that there there are families that have a hard time sitting down to Thanksgiving dinner right now over their disagreement and, about the president and they do because they ap approach a conversation and you know and I'll step back and say it perhaps is easy, easier because neither one of us are hard partisans um, I respected Steve early on for being willing to call out uh, Democrats and and, mm -hmm. and liberals mm -hmm. I've always been willing to call out Republicans and conservatives um, so we're not so blindly loyal to party or philosophy that we don't recognize flaws but I think anybody can come to the point where they're willing to listen instead of just talk and I think that I've always enjoyed listening to Steve and I always learned something now I may we, he rarely changes my mind and I probably never change his but uh, <laughs> we learned have had you both come with examples uh, but we <laughs> learned something in the conversation I believe talking to him and hearing him out helps me make my arguments sharper uh, and and, mm. and, mm -hmm. and and maybe think of things I hadn't thought about in in shaping that argument. So you know, I think we make each other better because we disagree. And I think if people were willing to sit down and understand, you know, folks aren't coming to 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 their positions, whether it's on the president or anything else, out of you know just you know complete ignorance or evil, they've thought about this. So f try to figure out. How the, what, how that, that process worked like. for them. And, and that's where we've arrived, Stephen, is where, it, this is very, I, I can't imagine another, I can't think of another example. The president's supporters find it impossible to find, many of them, I shouldn't say everybody, yeah. find it impossible to find any fault with him. His critic, many of his critics find in it impossible to find that he's done anything oh, right. at all of value. Yeah. Neither one of those can be right. Right. Uh, but at the same time, I believe that that's what, uh, that's what the president is cultivating, right? He's cultivating loyalists and enemies uh, and the, the the people who are unable uh, to see beyond that I think are all playing into into his strategy yeah. but somebody can only divide you if you let him and I've, I've all one of the things I've always said about uh, the people who have lost their minds over Trump I mean you, you criticize him and then you mimic him I appreciate it guys thanks very much Thank and thanks you. for being a part of the flashpoint family we'll wrap things up right after this <laughs>